Ladies, gentlemen, and wicked things this way come. We are less than a day away from the official release of the Early Access for No Rest for the Wicked, the brand new ARPG from Moon Studios. The developers of games such as Ori and the Blind Forest and the game that we're getting here looks incredibly unique and absolutely just has its own identity worth exploring and understanding before you actually dive your face right into it. With that said, as someone who got to play as much as I wanted with the beginning section of the game a few weeks ago, thanks to the developers giving us the opportunity, I thought it would be a good time to just sort of guide you through said starter section and just to help give a general understanding of what to expect from the game. As I know a lot of people are confused about it even from the base concept of what sort of genre the game is. Well, put simply, the game is an ARPG in the classical sense of a game like Diablo, Path of Exile, or Last Epoch, but it's also more the actual more detailed sense of it where ARPG stands for action RPG, and that includes things like Souls-likes, like Monster Hunter type, slower paced, more visceral and in the moment feeling action type of art. RPGs. And so rather than just being one of those two, it sort of mixes these two together. Each animation asks you to learn it to understand how to dodge and parry them, because the game does have full dodge, blocking, and parry mechanics, and understanding what you're getting into here is a big deal. As well, it's worth noting that the game can be quite challenging, or at least it was with the balancing when I played it. When I say imagine an ARPG mixed with a more Soulsborne style, I mean it feels like a perfect marriage of the two put together, really honestly. The individual gameplay moments are much more involved, but it still has that shell of a looter dungeon crawler on it as well. So some things especially worth noting that we are aware of then. First is the concept of classes. is very loose in this game. It's not really that much of a thing. You can sort of evolve and change as you go if you want to to specialize in whatever you find you enjoy while playing, which is quite helpful to those of us who are a bit less decisive. Another fun point when it comes to the main story, exploration is your friend. I've only experienced a small portion of it myself, but presumably it says a lot that in my time in the starter area, instead of going the intended route, I managed to eject myself out the backside of the castle by falling off of a wall, then essentially just wading my way through water over to a hidden ladder, and just skipping a massive chunk of the opening section of the game, which is something that a dev even commented on the video saying that they didn't even know was possible. But then I did go back to the castle later, and that's when I realized that there were a ton of useful things there that I completely skipped, like, you know, the blacksmith. So this one sort of does go both ways, it's just keep in mind that exploration can lead you extremely far in this game if you want it to. The paths do exist in this game to let you just sort of go around where you actually want to if it looks at all possible, but if you do so, you might also miss some relatively important stuff along the way, so just keep that in mind while progressing. Another fun thing of note for those of you wondering how deep this game will actually be at launch given that it will be in early access, and the main thing that we know is that there is actually endgame content planned for it, most notably a specific roguelike dungeon called Serum's Crucible. The idea of this being that it is an activity that works from your own endgame character, but then you build upon it with various powers and such as you progress to different chambers and floors, essentially exactly what you imagine with the term roguelike dungeon crawler, but as a singular endgame activity within this larger game. Levels to get harder as you go, with each one being a random challenge, not just something like pure combat like most ARPG dungeons are, but you could get something like platforming, you could get puzzles that you have to solve with your actual brain, or you could just get standard dungeon combat that is also an option. But the idea is that it can be a much more creative system for them to actually add things to, and the devs have said that they want to really expand on this system a lot specifically in future updates as well. As well, in relation to that, it's worth mentioning that while at Early Access launch, the game will be single player only, we know that the first major update they have planned is to add up to four player co-op multiplayer to the game, which should be quite fun. They expect it to be very seamless, let you fight through the entire game together, bosses, normal enemies, levels, every, literally everything they want you to be able to do in a group, and which is pretty cool, especially with the sort of unique combat style compared to most other ARPGs. I think it will create its very own specific niche where regardless of how popular the game gets as a whole, there will be a lot of people who are addicted to this game solely for the unique co-op experience that it'll offer once that's added in. With all that then, let's get a bit more general with it, because I do want to really focus in on the visuals of the game. Usually I am of the opinion that graphics don't make a game good, but they can make a good game better. And I think more important than literal graphical fidelity is having a lasting and aesthetically pleasing style, and I mean, you cannot really ask for more than that in that realm of things than you can actually get from No Rest for the Wicked here. The game feels like an actively moving, living, and breathing painting. It is gorgeous the whole way through as far as the background, to the point that I almost feel like I'm visiting an art museum and just playing a video game on the side of that activity. But then the characters also, at the same time, both look cool, but also silly. Like, every character looks a little bit silly in a world that's so serious, and I just, I love that dichotomy as well. The music and the sound design equally are quite enticing to me, honestly, here. The point of this being, just don't rush through the game, right? I know a lot of people's first instinct when you hear a game is an ARPG is to just get to the end game of it 
as fast as you possibly can. But this really isn't that kind of game in my opinion, especially right now in early access with limited end game actually available. This is far more about the journey itself. So you should explore, you should enjoy, you should take your time with it. Don't rush through things, don't rush past enemies, actually enjoy the fights. And remember that you only get your first playthrough once, just like with any game. On a similar note to that though, but on the gameplay side of things, you also want to take it slow when it comes to combat. There is slow health regeneration outside of combat, but in combat you are limited to what you have on you, including things like food, which can heal you, but it has cooldown, so you can't just spam food over and over. The point being, survival and defense is most often your best friend in this game. You don't want to be more offensive than defensive. Kill things quickly is cool, but it doesn't help if doing so is also dangerous and gives you a chance of just straight up dying and having to go back a step. The game has iframe dodges, it has aggressive parries, so choose at least one of those two major damage avoidance mechanics and just, well, learn them and get good with them, to be completely honest, and the rest of the game will just sort of fall into place for you. But at least until we are much deeper into the game with actual builds of some sort, there's no real benefit to just smacking your face against your enemies going full balls to the wall attack mode. And trust me, you are far better off just learning to love your parries and dodges. That said though, the next sort of point that I want to make is just how satisfying it all feels when it does come together. The best example that I could ever give of this is my actual kill on the first proper boss of the game. I started it off with just a string of parries back to back in the animations, the gore, the sounds. It all just makes you feel so unbelievably powerful and the art style makes it feel so beautiful at the same time. And unlike in most ARPGs where you get that feeling based on your character and build, in No Rest for the Wicked, it came for me personally at least from those specific skill-based moments, from me actually interacting with it properly and correctly, from the chain parries, from the frame-perfect dodges, and that really just adds a layer that changes the whole feeling of it all with this kind of game. And I think in a way this will both make an ARPG that appeals to a lot of people who normally don't like ARPGs, but simultaneously also offer a much more long-term grindy type experience than pretty much 99-95% of like any Souls life that I've ever seen for players who are into that type of gameplay, with again, one of the inspirations the devs themselves have given being Monster Hunter, at least as a long-term goal with multiplayer involved too. And from my experience so far, the game is really just quite well made. And personally, I'm just excited to get my hands on the full thing, or at least as much of the full thing that we will get with the start of early access. That just about does it for today then everyone, just a bit of a starter guide on No Rest for the Wicked, a breakdown of what to expect when you get into the game, some of what you will find later, and what you should probably understand before actually dropping into the world yourself to hopefully just help enhance your experience. Like if you liked the video, subscribe with the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye